So now that my underpainting is, is completely dry, I'm going to go ahead and put a coat of shellac on it, and then I'm going to let that dry for a half hour to an hour. And then I'm going to start applying the the uh, oil paints, and um, I don't use any medium, and um, I'll, I have uh, the description of the brush that I use and the colors that I'm using. So um, let's get to it. Next, I'll be taking the shellac, clear shellac, and alcohol. And I'll be making a two-thirds mixture. I'll be mixing it in this cup. And then I'm going to pour it on the canvas. So let's get that going. So this is the palette that I'm going to be using. It's pretty much his palette, the way he has it laid out. But I got some substitutes because I don't have those colors. So let's go over what he has on his palette compared to mine. So on this side of the palette, he has raw umber, burnt sienna, and then I'm substituting the reds that he has here, the two reds with Quinacridone Red, which is a Vincent D'Asturi color, and a transparent maroon. But he does use a Lizard and Crimson, and I have that. And then here I have Raw Sienna. And he's got this color called Ferrous Yellow. I don't know if that's an obsolete yellow, so I'm assuming that's kind of like, like a, uh, a yellow okra. I have uh, Cadmium Yellow. And I don't have any lemon yellow, so if I need some, I might have to mix that with some white. I got my white. I got my Viridian, Ultramarine Blue, and Cobalt Blue. And you notice there's no black in his palette, so let's see how that transpires and how that works out for me. Because I might have to be, we'll add some black later because of my um, lack of expertise in, in this. So... Let me go ahead and put these on the palette and then um, we'll start painting. And I'm going to be mixing ultramarine blue, um, raw sienna, a little bit of this asphalt. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start doing my background. So what I'm doing here now is I'm going to be painting in a light, a little bit of light in this. And so I'm just using the titanium light. Um, Norman Rockwell's initial palette required zinc white. But when I took uh, Vincent Desiderio's uh, class, he said that um, if uh, titanium white was available from the old masters, they would be using that instead of zinc white. And 
I've tried using zinc white, some really cheap zinc white, just to, to experiment with it. And I found that it just disappeared. It was just like, almost like an invisible pigment because when you, when you, uh, mix it in, it, uh, it disappears. So here I'm, I took a mixture of raw sienna and white and what I found about Norman Rockwell's palette is it's so easy to understand. It's so cut and dry and so simple. And just these two colors make the skin tone and I can adjust it. But with the purple, it really helps me understand what I'm painting. And by putting the shellac on, if I make a mistake, all I have to do is wipe it away and it's completely. And here I'm applying some alizarin crimson. A little bit of burnt sienna. The burnt sienna has a really nice uh, orangey brown to it. And one thing I found about burnt sienna is you can do some nice golden retriever paintings. If you want to paint a golden retriever, that's the color to use. So I'm just going in some really warm oranges and leather and crimson and finding what I'm looking at, trying to understand it, trying to understand the hierarchy of layers. I feel like I'm at this point in my oil painting, like I'm going to tackle a uh, Norman Rockwell. I don't think I could have done this when I first started oil painting about three years ago. The first oil paintings, it's, it's a learning curve because it's it's a medium that doesn't is not dry, and you have to understand the principles of the fat over lean rule, which is the fat over the fat oil over the lean oil. I'm just building. Uh, you now there, I just added some ultramarine blue. There's there's some blue characteristics in the chin area. The brush I'm using is Windsor Newton Oil Color Number Two Flat, and I find that it's got a really nice tip. I can get a nice sharp line, but then I can also get a nice shade line that'll, that'll give you some nice shading. Not anything smooth, but something that, it's not rough, I don't know what you would call it. it. It's got variations. It's not flat at all. And here I'm just trying to find my shadows. Applying the paint where I want it to, to blend. Some of the uh, raw sienna and white, a little bit of that blue, lizard and crimson. Now there, I grabbed um, some of that normal red, I believe. I can't pronounce it. It's, it's it's quicks, quicks or donor in red, something like that. Now here I'm, I'm starting to carve out the nose, bringing out the uh, reflective shadow. And if you, you like what you're watching and you see something that you can learn from, you know, just leave a comment and, and let me know if you're learning something or I can improve on what I'm doing if I'm doing something wrong because it's really important. And, I'm, and I just want to uh, just make quality videos. 
of interesting subjects. I mean, I mean, master copies are a great, great video subject, and I do a lot of my own original stuff too. But as of late, I'm just still I feel like um, you know, turning the wheels and and moving forward and trying to evolve into something. Don't know what yet. But here I'm carving out the new, uh, the chin. I'm trying to keep the color broken up because there's a lot of noodling. And uh, that's one thing you have to inject yourself in is the noodling aspect too. And understanding the palette and I found the palette was really easy just to adapt to. And I feel like this is like the best palette that I've ever worked with. And this is something that, a palette that I could use more and more because it's so simple, because you don't have some palettes, they have, you know, the warm color and the, the cool color of each color. So you have like ultramarine blue and a phthalo blue, that's a cool blue and a warm blue. And then you have, you know, all the straight down the line with the red, yellow is. But this, it's you know, it's not that at all. And it's easier to, to understand. And I wish I could have went out and bought the the actual reds and the, the, the yellows because, you know, I have so many tubes of paint in my studio. I have to uh, use them up and... You know, I think I can replace it some, but I, I don't know. And that, that one yellow, I didn't, it was a mistake to put the uh, yellow ochre on there because uh, that, that doesn't look like the yellow that he was using. So, you know, yellow ochre is it's good for other, other palettes. Now here I'm getting some, some asphaltin. It's a very rich, uh, kind of like uh, burnt umber. It's, now that's not on his palette. And I didn't describe it when I first introduced the palette, but that's that's what's there. And I use it sparingly just, just to cut through some of that oil because when, you know, sometimes you think you have a nice, a nice dab of color on your brush and when you, we lay it down and it doesn't do anything. So something like that would cut through. And um, the transparent maroon, that that cuts through too. So near him just speeding it up, tries, trying to uh, make it uh, less boring. But here I'm just carving out the features, trying to make it look like the, the, the reference that I'm using in I decided not to put the reference on, on this video. If you want to see the reference, you can go to the first video. I'll put a link in the description.
So now I'm getting into the eyes and the eyebrows and the eyelashes. And that's the mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And it makes a rich black. And I was so skeptical that I would get a nice rich black out of it, but it, it's a rich black and it's not a flat gray. And I think, and I, I think, I mean, I should know, but, you know, looking at his work, you know, he did work Ala Prima. So he worked wet on wet. And, uh, now here I had to jump cut because there was a lot, I was having uh, technical difficulties with my, my camera. So, uh, so I was sculpting the eye from the ground up and, here I'm just trying to blend in the edge of the pupils into the, the whites of the eye. And then I believe I'm going to I'm going to sculpt right there. Yeah, I'm going to go and start sculpting it from in with a nice shadow using the local color around it. But, you know, we as artists, you know, when we work on our drawings and our paintings, if we're really immersed in our drawing and we start plowing ahead, we get into our own heads and we don't realize how good it is until we look at it maybe weeks later. Because when we're in the moment, we're always constantly criticizing ourselves. Is this right? Is this wrong? Is this how someone would like it? Or is this how would I would like it? Or would people like this? And you know, we just got to, we got to move forward with our, our strengths as, as artists. And if we really love what we do, and I truly believe that every person is an artist, every person has an artist, artistic talent in them. And all you got to do is read drawing on the right side of the brain and you will have, find your, your niche and who you are as an artist and it'll, it'll ignite a passion to draw, a passion to paint, a passion to create and have a satisfactory ending to the to the piece and i found that after i read this book all i wanted to do was draw and to experiment and to do new things because for a long long time i was drawing in a rut i was doing the same thing over and over again for years and i was a, i was in a place where i was very unhappy with my art so i decided that i was just going to you know just do it as a hobby and just do it just maybe stop doing it all together but when I heard an interview with uh, an artist I really admired, his name is Greg Capula. He's a he's an artist for the the mainstream comic book stories, and um, he said he re he read this book and it, he saw a difference, and so I, I, it really intrigued me and it, it whet my appetite to look at this book and to look at it seriously and take it seriously and do everything that it says from from the very first page to the very last page. And when I did that, it changed it changed me, and I. I highly recommend if you really, really want to understand who you are as an artist and to discover your artist and to discover the inner artist that you never thought you had, pick this book up and just read it straight through. And it gives you a, a, a detailed look in the psychology of drawing and why we draw the way we do, why we draw the stick figures. When people say, well, I can only draw a stick figure, it tells you why people do that. You know, and um, I definitely want to get into it more in future videos because I'm very passionate about that book. Upon reading his book, I got a, a good glimpse into his his methods and his processes. And one of his processes is taking reference photos, and he would have a, a photographer do them for them for him, and then he would do a live painting of the subject to get an actual feel of the person in front of him. And then he would go to the studio and start laying out different layouts and, and finding the best compositions. And 
then he would do a detailed charcoal drawing, a, a drawing that you, could be a cover in itself, so detailed that there's no more guessing work. All, everything is already done. That's how detailed it is. And that's how detailed I got with my the underpainting in the first video. And that's, that's how he does things. And I'm really resonating and really loving this this method that that this painter this uh, Norman Rockwell has presented in his in his book and I'm really digging it and I'm really uh, having a lot of fun with it and understanding a lot better of the world of art and the world of the artists that I like to to study and to understand and to learn from and I hope you're learning from these videos Now I'm trying to carve out the eyelashes. Instead of doing like actual eyelashes, I'm trying to carve them out and uh, then go back over, you know, and uh, maybe I should just let it dry and then just do, do that. But I'm, I'm working wet on wet and trying to see if that works. Cause I'm so eager to see the finished piece because when you do these things you're so eager to see it finished you know and you have a finished vision of what it looks like when you start it because you have it right there in front of you the reference but i wanted to learn i wanted to create some nice content and i appreciate the the poll i had a little poll and the votes were in it was either jc linedecker dean cornwell or norman rockwell and you guys voted for norman rockwell and uh, I'm, I'm so glad you did because this is really a great experience and and i hope you're enjoying this i really do and if you do if you're a new person and you like this just please consider subscribing because it helps a small youtuber like me gain traction in the algorithms of the art videos because there's some amazing art videos and i see the popularity of art and i see the popularity of, of people wanting to learn art and i truly believe everybody is an artist so if you do like this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a comment and ringing that bell and letting me know that I do put out videos consistently, either weekly or bi-weekly, depending on my schedule. But I do like doing these. I love doing these and, and I hope you like watching them because it's a joy to do these. And I thank, thank the Lord and, and Jesus Christ is our King, our Savior, and he loves us. And I want everybody to know listening to this right now. If you're turning it off, that's okay because we love you. And if you're still on, we all love you still. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And let's continue with this amazing painting, this amazing American illustrator, Norman Rockwell, who's made all those amazing covers, those amazing, amazing covers that will never, ever go away. They'll always be here timeless. They're timeless pieces, and they're part of American history and a part of American culture. And... and He's such an inspiration to people and such an inspiration to me. And and it's helped me understand who I am as an artist. And and I wanted to really take my time with these videos. So I um, I wanted to not rush things because I feel, I feel like when I'm doing these paintings that they should not be rushed because Norman Ruckel did not rush. He prepared meticulously. And... He knew exactly before he put that last that last stage, everything was in place. All he had to do was just turn off the left side of his brain and work on the right side and just enjoy, his, enjoy the, the art of uh, painting. And just help me understand that too, you know. And it's, I, I truly believe that, you know, I know that art, well, art is imitation. Everybody's imitating each other, even, you know, the great Steve Jobs said, you know, that's that's how people, you know, create art. They just copy each other. And I'm not saying rip each other off. But I'm saying, you know, great art is no, never original. You're always, you're always uh, emulating the, the master before you. So, um, so yeah. So um, it's just, it's just having a good time with the paint and and, and taking your time and and this is real time and and. Uh, I'm just trying to capture the feel because I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm such, I'm in the evolution of my art that I am starting to make some good pieces and some pieces that are, are, uh, you know, that, you know, have charisma and, and energy 
and magnetism to them. And that's the kind of paintings I want to do. And, you know, I've seen those paintings in, in real life and, and that's how I want to paint, you know, and, you know, I recommend, you know, you visit your local museum and look at these masters. I know that, you know, I live in Atlanta and we have the high, the, the high museum and we have uh, some really great paintings there, but we do have a sergeant. We have a small sergeant and a small uh, William Eric Chase and they're next to each other and on top of each other. And the one that, that is the sergeant, you know, he did it painting on the beach. He painted his cousin on the beach and uh, had pieces of sand in it and you can just look you can just walk right up to it So when you're, you're painting in oil paint, the one thing you really have to learn is how to carve out of that that oil, and uh, it, it takes it takes practice. It takes practice to learn the fat oil over lean oil. But it, it's really uh, if you go back and watch my Dean Cornwell videos when I'm doing the 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 jugs, you know, I'll just put in like a really really thin layer. Of, of oil and then I'll go in with thicker oil and thicker oil and thicker oil and that's pretty much the, the gist of it you know and you could you could do like the Vincent Desiderio method and just you know work tonally and then put in start putting in glazes you know and just layer that or you know multiple multiple layers that is the way I like to do that too I mean there's paintings like that but, but you know it's just like sometimes it's like overload overload you know um but you just have to, you know, it, take it all in and, you know, um, digest it and, and take what you can out of it and take what things that you want to learn out of it. And, uh, but this is definitely a great learning experience. And, you know, I feel, I feel like uh, I'm moving forward and, and getting this painting like a, 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 Dean, a, a Norman Rockwell. And, uh, you know, the, the subject matter, too, is near and dear to me, too. The, uh, St. Bernadette of Lourdes. Uh, it's a story that's very near and dear to me. But, you know, here I'm, I'm carving out the, the eye and the pupil, adding the it's six o'clock highlight. And it really gives you the impression of looking up. She's looking up at the Blessed Virgin, Our Lady of Sorrows, and she's giving her all to her. And her whole her whole existence was dedicated to to God and the Holy Ghost. And looking at this painting, look at the way. I went about the, the procedures that Norman Walkwell laid out in his book. I, it, 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 look, it looks, it's looking really nice. I'm really, really impressed with the results. And it's really all in the palette. It really is. It's the, that simplicity of the palette. And... <laughs>
yourself out and now protein it. Go back to the Vincent D'Asterio method of glazing. But all I want to do is right now I'll just concentrate on this likeness and trying to make like a, a Norman Rockwell painting with Norman Rockwell brush strokes. And I guess it would be really hard to determine what it really looked like without looking at it in actual person, you know, in, in actual, you know, the material painting in front of you, the actual painting that Norman painted, painted. And I don't know, um, you know, I, I do believe that, you know, paintings, you know, a living painting does have a life to it of its own and an energy of it. The, you know, the artist, you know, what the artist was thinking at the time, the time period of the painting. And, and uh, I, I, I do think about it that deeply, I believe. But so here I'm, I'm going in um, with the ultramarine blue and pushing it back. Now, um, I'm going to be going in with the veil. This is asphalt, and it's kind of cut through into the, the core of the veil. And, and uh, you know, I, I think I've, I've been somewhat successful in, in capturing the face. And this video is just going to be the face. I was, I was hoping to do the whole, the whole painting, but I realized that I didn't want to make it a two hour video it would be you know a heavy task to put that all together at one time so i thought it'd be it'd be better for me just to concentrate on the face um record the video edit it and then upload it to youtube and and make a digestible piece and um just try and make it entertaining and not too overbearing because i know that you know, for whatever reason, you know, some videos don't don't hit the algorithm. But my, it seems like my George Bridgman videos are have hit a, a consistent uh, stream of views. Not a lot of subscriptions, but a lot of views. And you know, the, the average view duration is like three minutes. So I don't, you know, if you you know, I hope you know in future, you know, I can get a, you know, a, a, a subscri a subs you know. A su following to where I can have, you know, uh, someone who appreciates, you know, what I'm trying to say, because, you know, not just, you know, losing patience of people and, and me too, uh, trying to grow as far as, you know, being a, a YouTube content creator and commentator and, and doing the things that I like doing and, and expressing, you know, uh, my appreciation for all you guys who are watching this or hearing this right now. So, um, yeah, I'm just going a little deeper with the, uh, the under the chin. It's very, uh, it's very, uh, reddish brown. And, uh, and then there's some, uh, lights, reflective lights coming off. Uh, and another reason I didn't show the palette, you know, in, in the middle section is because I got so lost and syncing my phones. I'm using uh, two iPhones, and uh, but I'm really I'm really impressed with uh, the simplicity of it and that, how easy it is to put these videos together. And you know, uh, it's a lot of fun. But um, I'm really looking forward to uh, finishing this up uh, before uh, next week. And God, God willing, he's he's been amazing to me and. And if anybody's out there, you know, just feeling kind of down, listen to this right now, I just want you to know that God loves you. And you're an amazing person, God, and he's made you individual, and you have your own fingerprint, and you have your own destiny, and you have your own your will. And it's it's up to you to to move forward with your life and understand who you are and, and just just read the Gospels and just sit back and understand who God is and be more in, intuitive in, in the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ and he loves you, and, and I love you, and I love you for listening to this right now, if you're listening to me. So thank God for you, and thank God for the things that he has in plan for you. So if you hear that in, in the, anywhere in this video and you think that helped you, just leave a comment and let me know. And I really appreciate that, too. So so anyway, right now I see I'm, I'm, I'm blending in the local color, the local color of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And now I'm going in, cutting in the shadows of the veil, string 
And now I'm adding a local color and I'm going to start working on the ribbon and the veil. And um, the uh, the raw umber, it, on this painting, it will look gray. So, so yeah. So, uh, Now, one thing I want to point out is I use very little medium. I did not use a lot of medium. In fact, I don't think I used any medium. I just used the oils that were already in the tubes, and it worked out great. And if you do look at a Norman Rocco painting, you can almost tell that he likes to, his oils firm. And so that's what I did. So don't use a lot of medium if you're trying to attempt to try this, this painting. Thank you.